hello and welcome to The Next Element. I'm your host, Deb Ballantyne. Have you ever picked up a rock or a crystal and got a vibe or felt something? Uh, tonight we have Louisa G from Canadian Coven Jewelry here to illuminate us on crystals and how they can benefit us. Welcome, Louisa. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So, we're going to start off with a really easy question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Explain to us a little bit what are crystals? Well, crystals are tools to help us manifest what it is that we desire in our life or to help us with healing on different journeys, whether that be spiritual healing, physical healing. Um, they're, they're great elements to add to your household, to your living environment, to your work environment. Um, they really are just very useful tools for us. Oh, very good. Okay. And so you, you kind of got into what crystals are used for. Um, you talked about healing and uh, I guess um, I, I've read a little bit too about how they, they help to balance chakras and uh, balance our energies, balance the flow. Right. Um, okay, so can you, is there anything else that you can elaborate on with that? Or? Um, well, so depending on what it is that you are seeking, so whether it's manifesting abundance into your household or um, if you want to, um, if you're on a different, depends on where you are in your spiritual journey. Um, if you're looking to, say, open your third eye so that you have more vivid dreams, um, you'll want to incorporate certain crystals. So, for example, if you want to open your third eye, um, start having more vivid dreams. Um, sometimes that's how we tap into the spiritual world as well for communication. Um, labdarite is a great uh, crystal for that, to have at the bedside as you sleep. Um, so it kind of depends on where you are in your journey, what it is that you want to manifest, um, what it is you're trying to heal. Um, if it's uh, maybe more along the lines of mental health and uh, clarity, um, trying to find a, a clearer direction. Sometimes clear quartz um, is a really great tool for that as well. So um, there's, there's a crystal for everybody and, and for, for all issues that you, know, you might be uh, looking for some guidance with. Oh, okay. So it's uh, for for somebody like me that doesn't know a lot about crystals. Mm -hmm. How do I know what to choose? I, I um, like if I walk into is it is it the attraction? Like I'm I'm attracted to um, you know the the clear quartz or the um, obsidian or or is is that how I go about choosing it? Uh, does the crystal choose me? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm a firm believer that the crystal chooses you. Um, so often what I'll ask clients is um, what is it that you're kind of going through in life right now that you feel that you need a little bit more direction in or if you're gifting it to somebody what are some challenges that they're going through right now in life that they maybe they need something to aid in that area. Um, so that kind of gives me an idea of what it is that maybe might best suit for that person um, but if you're not quite sure maybe you have more than one situation happening or if you're unable to put your words to what it is that you're kind of looking for I always encourage um, clients to walk around and touch and feel the crystals you want to be able to hold them and to see what kind of draws you whether it's the color whether it's sort of like um, maybe more into like raw crystals as opposed to polished crystals um, it kind of, I want to see what kind of draws you in and pulls you in. And then usually there's a reason why certain energy is attracting you. So we kind of try to dive more into that because um, if you're not able to elaborate what it is that you're kind of looking for based on your crystals, I can kind of tell you what it is that they can help manifest and maybe that will make the connection for you and then it will kind of make sense why the energy is kind of pulling you towards it. Oh, that sounds very cool. Now, I had an experience once where I had a piece of um, red jasper in my hand okay. and I almost passed out. Okay. And they actually had to back me away from the <laughs> table. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, um, can you, I, I mean, obviously, you know, you don't know what was going on in my life at the time, yeah. and that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. I can't even tell you. Yeah. But, I mean, could you, could you sort of... Um, maybe give us some type of idea, you know, why that affected me so um, so fiercely. Right. Um, so sometimes, uh, sometimes we don't have the words for it. But sometimes when we're picking up crystals, sometimes we'll feel heat or coldness reaching up our hand. Or in, in your situation, you're kind of you know, lightheaded and kind of kind of losing your your balance. Uh, sometimes the energy is quite strong in invoking what it is that we really need, and that also tells us where you're imbalanced in your system. So when we look at the chakras, um, if you're having such a, a strong feeling towards say red jasper um, that tells me that I'd really want to practice your healing or look at crystals that's going to affect your sacral cha 
chakra, because um, that's what um, red jasper is kind of leaning towards, is, okay. is, is healing that that, sh that chakra. So we want to look at that area, and then we would have a further discussion as to maybe what's happening right now. Um, it could be in line with something physiological, it could be something metaphysical, um, it could be something social. So we kind of try to look at those kind of areas and see what best suits you. And then moving along, we would look at what type of form in that crystal would be best for you because some people have limited space in their house so having a larger piece that might take up some space isn't as practical instead maybe a you know as simple as a tumble or a palm stone um, that would really help um, get all the influences from the crystal for what you need because you'll, you'll put it to better use that way okay very cool um, now I, I've been uh, obviously I did a little bit of reading and I, it talked a lot about um, cleansing my crystals. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the purpose of cleansing your crystals and how does one go about doing that? Yeah, absolutely. So you can think of crystals as doing an abundance of work for you, even if you don't know that it is or you don't see the, 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 the changes and the benefits quite yet, but they are constantly working for you. Um, and so what you wanna do is, um, there, there's a few different ways that you can cleanse your crystals. Um, but for example, I'll use the moon as, uh, that's, that's my favorite way to cleanse crystals. Um, so on the on the full moon, you would place your crystals out on its lid, on the windowsill if you can, and so that it can see the moon and the moon can see the crystal. And what the moon does is it helps recharge and cleanse the, the crystal of all the work it's done that past month. So maybe some months, you know, your obsidian was working really hard and protecting you and your home. Um, and uh, what happens is it dispels all that negativity that it was, it was able to draw in away from your um, your living space, um, and then. At at that point it would cleanse and you're good to go for the next month. Um, so that's just one of the ways. Um, some other ways that you can um, cleanse your crystals is, I always uh, tell customers, if you purchase a, a crystal or say a piece of jewelry that has crystals in it, um, I always recommend kind of placing it in a bowl of uh, rice, any kind of rice in any kind of bowl. Make sure that, it, that your piece of jewelry is covered and let it sit overnight. And then um, in the morning, um, get rid of the, the rice because you don't want to ingest that and um, then your jewelry is ready to wear. And what that does is it kind of sucks out any kind of negative energy or any energy that somebody may have placed on that crystal um, because in those um, uh, high traffic areas it's, it's getting handled by a lot of different people. Right. So you want to make sure that your crystal belongs to you and then you have the opportunity to infuse your energy and your, your manifestations into that crystal so it can best work for you. Okay, okay. Um, and is there a way for people to tell like a fake crystal from a real crystal? I mean, we yeah. do a lot of buying online and yeah. you never know what's going on online anymore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, it's unfortunate because there, there is a lot of um, uh, fake crystals out there. Um, so usually if you find crystals that just look too perfect, um, the colors are just like, like for instance, this is a carnelian. So you can see with carnelian, you have bands of yellow, gold, deep red, dark red, some browns, you have some veins in here. Um, that's how you know you're working with, I mean, that's just for carnelian, you know that you're working with a, a real crystal just by the look of it. You can see the imperfections. You can see right. the color isn't um, uh, perfect all the way through. Um, you know, this is, this is a beautiful shade of red here on this carnelian. Um, and then sometimes, uh, sometimes some carnelians will be sold as like it will be all flesh deep red and that's it there's there's nothing else to it there's no banding there's no other colors um, so I would be worried about stones that come across that are imperfected um, that seem like they've been in, infused with uh, colors dyes that sort of thing um, malachite's another one that often gets um, uh, a, manufactured, over manufactured. And um, there's definitely ways to see it with the green banding. Um, and sometimes you'll find some that have green and black banding that's very unrealistic to what real malachite looks like. So it kind of depends. Um, for clear quartz, for instance, I mean, you can imagine like, how do I not know this is a piece of glass or this is plastic? Well, number one, the imperfections. Number two, the weight of it. Definitely not plastic. Um, and definitely not glass because when you look at, um, this is a very high quality clear quartz from Brazil. Um, you can see you can see the clarity is right there, but you can also see that there's some rainbows. You can also see that there's some um, uh, matrix in there. Um, there's a few occlusions. Um, so I guess you 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 get an eye for crystals after you start working and, and collecting them over the years. Mm -hmm. um, so you, and then you become very familiar with what looks fake and not fake. Um, there's different tests that you can do on your crystals to see if they're fake or not fake. Um, 
for instance, amber, for instance, there's a, there's a ton of tests that you can do to, to check to see if your amber that you have is, is real. So, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so just uh, maybe make sure you're buying from a reputable deal dealer, right? That's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay, and so I noticed that you're wearing several pieces of jewelry and they ha they're inlaid with crystals. Yes. So what does wearing the crystal do? Like does it, does it emphasize the effect of whatever it is that you're trying to manifest? Absolutely, so um, for example, this is my first time on television, so I'm a little bit nervous today. Um, I've never, this is a whole new experience for me. So I chose to wear some Larimar and some blue lace um, and some aquamarine because um, for me those crystals kind of help calm me down and recenter me to focus um, and just really calm this nervous energy that I started off at the beginning of the day um, so it kind of helps manifest that type of energy so that's what I went for and that's what I wanted to manifest today was just a calm calm energy um, and then you're and it's a good practice to have it on your left side when you when you want to bring in a certain energy so whether that's um, more focus in your life or um, more abundance um, uh, you know uh, romantic relationships you'll want to wear that on your left side but on your right side you always want to wear your protection um, crystals and, and jewelry so you'll often see me wear my obsidian or my tourmaline on my right side um, those are kind of my go-to's for protection um, and that's why you'll you kind of see me wearing both on each side um, and then for my necklace, it's also uh, Larimar. Um, Larimar is a, a, a beautiful stone from Dominican. It looks um, beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, it's one of my favorite pieces, um, but again, it's one of those stones that works really well with me. Um, and I'm very honest with everyone when I say crystals aren't, like not every crystal is for everyone. Um, so, you know, Larimar works beautifully with me. Some people, you know, they need how light, and that really helps bring them down a notch and, and help calm their mind. Um, so it's a very personal experience and journey working with crystals. Oh, very good, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so just very quickly, Louisa, what is the difference between a tumbled uh, crystal and a raw crystal? Sure, so here for an example, um, this is pyrite, so this would be like a raw crystal. So as you can see, it hasn't been polished, it hasn't been really um, touched up, anything like that. And then here you have a tumble of um, rose quartz. So you can see it's been polished, it's, it's very soft to touch, or smooth I should say. Um, so there's no difference in terms of, um, like you don't decrease the amount of energy that the crystal provides, whether it's been polished or not. It's more of a preference to uh, what you like to use and how you're going to use it. Um, so for instance, like I myself, um, I always stuff crystals everywhere um, it, you know you kind of want those a little bit more smoother than <laughs> <laughs> than others I mean I say that but I do have a piece of raw pyrite in my bra right now but um, I do have a um, you know some uh, smoother stones for that reason just because of what you're using it for perfect yeah. okay uh, okay well thank you uh, I was gonna call you crystal oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Louisa, for being on the show. Thank you for having um, me. You know, it's, this, is, this has been a great journey. Um, it's, it's been a great introduction uh, to the world of crystals. And, uh, you know, I love, I love the, these, all, all the different colors and stuff that we have here. And, uh, you know, I, I have a little bit of knowledge, but not a lot. Um, so, again, I want to say thank you. And uh, we hope to have you back again. Absolutely. All Thanks right. for having me. Okay, stay tuned after the break. We have Jim and Marsha from the Fung Luk Loi Kuk Institute of Taoism to teach us about Taoism and the art of Tai Chi. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to The Next Element. I'm Deb Ballantyne. Tonight I have Marcia Eberhardt and Jim Nicholson from the Fung Loi Guk Institute of Taoism. Welcome Jim and Marcia. Mm. Nice my, to be here. <laughs> <laughs> my original mm. intent when I, when I wanted to have you on was to talk specifically about Tai Chi, um, the art of Tai Chi, but upon doing my research I discovered that we can't really speak about Tai Chi, the Tai Chi arts, without understanding a little bit, a little bit about the Tao. So Jim, I'm going to ask you, what is the Tao or Taoism? That's a really good question, and you're already on the right foot by seeing <laughs> what a strong relationship there is. 
Uh, so Taoism is a system of wisdom of cultivating body, mind, and spirit that's been passed on for many thousands of years uh, from teacher to student. It's, we call it an oral transmission. That uh, it's, it's a system of practices and something that you do learning from a teacher. Uh, and we're very lucky that through the ages it was passed on to our teacher, uh, Master Moi Lin Shin, uh, who's a Taoist monk, uh, who came to Canada in 1970 and uh, established our organization. Uh, and in particular, which is important in this area, is our international center is on the number five road, the, the Fung Lai Gok International Center. Uh, so it's an amazing resource that draws people from all around the world to here in Mono. Oh, very nice. So. Okay. So I, in, in doing some of the reading, um, I, I heard, or uh, sorry, I read about the ori our original nature. Yeah. So what, what, what is our original nature? What does that refer to? Yeah, so it refers to something that we all have. Uh, one, sim one way of symbolizing it is, is like a spark. On, uh, on our altars, we have a candle, and that candle is always lit, and it represents the spark of goodness that we all have inside of us, uh, and that in one way the goal of Taoism is to cultivate that spark, to try to become a better person. And a better person is someone who is as helpful as possible in the world, who is able to see what's best in any situation, who, who, to cultivate our, our inner wisdom, and interestingly also to cultivate our body. That, that Taoism has always recognized that cultivating health cultivating our spirit and cultivating our original nature, they all go together. And the more we can develop one, uh, the more the other is also automatically developed. So for many people, that's, that's a really attractive and interesting and, and valuable part of it, is it's a chance to cultivate the whole person. And, and I think we also see it's just so natural, you yeah. know, that it isn't sort of, you know, I don't know, complicated or anything. You know, we all kind of all grew up being just who we were and very natural, but then we get older and things happen, and <laughs> you know, so it's just it's just such a, a light in a sense, beautiful kind of how to how to be that way, you know, just that pureness or that naturalness, that being helpful. That's a very natural way to be, but sometimes we lose that. Okay, so actually you just, Marsha, that's perfect, because you just <laughs> answered my next question. I was just going to say, what are the, some of the factors that mm. cause us to lose it, and how does Taoism help people return to that state? Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add to that? Um, well, we could, if we think about how we are in the world, think about the problems that we encounter. What Taoism teaches is, is that we, kind of what we have in our minds and, and the habits that we have in our minds and in our bodies, can really create problems for us. Um, and it comes from, you know, being greedy or being angry or kind of reacting in negative ways to, to things that happen in the world. Um, and when we look at that in the whole world, if, you know, if, if everybody's like that, that's when we get all kinds of suffering. We get the wars that we see right now, we get uh, selfishness and conflict and all these things that then can just make that suffering perpetuate itself over and over. And we can look at it in the, in the larger world, but we can look at it in our families. We can look at it in ourselves even. The, you know, things that we've done in the past, they continue to echo through, you know, what we feel now and, and you know, decisions uh, that we made that, that have an effect on our health. All of those things take us away from our original nature, that actually, that our, that spark of goodness wants to shine. That, that, mm -hmm. that spark of health, that spark of compassion, that spark of wisdom, it actually wants to shine. And there's, that's the nice thing, I mean, Marsha mm -hmm. talked about how natural it is. That's the nice thing about Taoism is that we, it's not forcing us to be somebody who we aren't, it's more helping us to uncover what's already in there and that we each have a way that we can be a better person in this world but sometimes we need our eyes opened to the right what's the right direction you know it's hard to do on your own but because we do it together with each other in a community and with people who have more experience at it they can help us to see you know how could we react better in this situation or where can I put my focus that will help me to be 
healthier and also a better, more helpful person. So that community of training uh, is an important way for us to 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 and uncover that light. Yeah, and just like the the body moving, you know, like it's just yeah. so natural, right? But then, of course, we sit in chairs, we sit in cars. We're no longer like you know, sitting up and, you know, just that usefulness that, yeah. that it really cultivates that. And the, and the organization, that, that's really what it's about. It's about doing those things. You know, so all of our instructors are all volunteers. It's like, it's an opportunity to practice giving, you know, to helping other I people. See. Okay, perfect. Um, so when we talk about the one in Taoism, um, how and how does that relate to the creation of the two and, and, and ongoing? So it's true for people who, if you search about Taoism on the internet, or there are lots of books out there, it can be, it's really interesting. And you know, my studies, those are the kinds of things that I studied. And it, um, it can, you know, it'll, it, it, it gives us stories about, um, you know, how our, how our energy moves in the body or how, what are the principles of transformation and change that, that uh, kind of govern the universe inside ourselves, the small universe, and also the universe outside? Um, really, what that's saying is that life is always changing. And we, we all know that. We change, we get mm -hmm. older, that um, you know, we start in as, probably as healthy as we'll ever be, mm -hmm. but we start to get older, and then as, as the years go by, we find that maybe our joints hurt more, or we can't run as fast as we used to, or uh, things happen to our health that, that we hadn't encountered before. That kind of shows, in Taoism, there's a movement from kind of beautiful balance and harmony and simplicity towards more complexity. Um, and so the one to two to the to the ten thousand things mm -hmm. really shows how things start in a in a in a kind of in a beautiful emptiness in a beautiful quiet place, but that through through changes it can become gradually more and more complicated, and that's the cycle of of degeneration in a way. But fortunately, Taoism also ch also teaches that we can look back to that. So it's a, another way of talking about going back to the source. I see. That, ha that becoming a better and more healthy person, again, it's not an imposition of something artificial. It's, it's a going back and discovering what's there already and where were we. And, and, it's, and where we're going is, a, you know, a sign that we're on the right track is when everything is simpler, when it's more quiet, when it's calm. Sometimes it's just, sim just symbolized by a round, empty circle we call Wu Qi. Okay. And that, that refers to that state of harmony and quiet where, where health can happen. Perfect. And that, that longevity, that's what we're about cultivating, you know, okay. that longevity. So yeah. I, I just want to, I want to switch gears a bit and I want to ask about the uh, Taoist Tai Chi arts and how does that help one return to the original nature? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so mm. it's it's a really unique way of moving. It's something that everybody can do. People don't have to be intimidated by oh you got to be an expert or you got to be good at coordinating or dance or any of those things. It's not that at all. It's it's really simply a rediscovery of the balance that we that we that we're all looking for mm -hmm. in our body and in ourselves. And so that movement helps us to find that feeling of balance. Uh, softness is also something that's very important. That when we can move softly, Taoism teaches that, that there's a lot of strength in softness. If you think about a tree branch, if the branch is dead, that's the classic example, if the branch is dead, it's really easy to break it, and that's not strong. But a new green living shoot is, is very, very strong. And so that's an illustration of how softness um, is associated with being strong and associated with being healthy. So the fact that uh, the Taoist Tai Chi arts we practice are calm and quiet and relaxed, they're, they're, they're moving meditation. They're a way of, of meditating and bring all the benefits of meditation, but even more so because we're gently and, and naturally moving the body 
Um, and in a way, we also call it an internal art. So what that means is you don't have to worry about the exact perfection of the form because you're not being judged on that. What's more important is the effect inside the body and not even not only the body, inside the whole person of that movement. How does it help us be more balanced, more natural and calm? Okay, so um, you're saying that it's, they're very soft movements. You don't have to necessarily be um, skilled in any type yeah. of, uh, you, know, you don't have to be a yogi in order to be able no. to perform this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. obviously somebody with, with uh, some health or mobility challenges would be able to, to take part in, mm -hmm. in the, the art of Tai Chi. Yep, everyone's welcome. So whether you, you know, have MS or, you know, Parkinson's or any, anything, any, you know, recovering from stroke, we just, everybody starts where they are. That's what's so, so beautiful to me about it too. So whether you're really healthy, you can always be healthier, you know, or whether you've got some serious problems, you know, you can, it can help. And we're all there doing the same thing, you know, so it doesn't matter what state that you're in. Yeah, Yeah, that's a, a really important part of our organization and our, our, our teacher, Master Moy, really wanted to make sure that we were giving a practice to the world that could benefit everybody, especially people with problems and health problems and mobility problems, because it, it will benefit so much. We've, we've taught in hospitals and so on, and it, it really it can help in some amazing ways. So, so that's a great opportunity there. That's, mm -hmm. that, that sounds lovely. It sounds like such a lovely community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I'm so happy that you came on the show and gave mm -hmm. us this introduction both to the Tao and to the Tai Chi arts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, perhaps that we can have you back and, and uh, discuss mm -hmm. it in a little bit more detail because obviously there's so much more here to open up. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to say mm -hmm. thank you, Marsha and Jim, for being on the show. Um, it was a pleasure learning about the Tao and how it helps us to balance mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, using the art of Tai Chi, uh, as one way to achieve or to get back to that original nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for having us. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for tuning in to The Next mm. Element with me, Deb Valentine. Love and light till next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>